This is Terry Leeson, and um, I thank you very much for uh, viewing my presentation today. I, uh, this is an exciting topic for me, and so I'm uh, looking forward to sharing this with everyone. Going to my first slide, what's my motivation for doing this? Um, actually, at it, it, Fullerton College, we do have quite a few websites that uh, instructors use, and um, instructors have a hard time keeping the websites current. And so this was a solution that I came up with that um, some people may use. I, I don't, I'm not saying it's uh, adopted 100%, but I use it and uh, some other instructors use it. Uh, RSS is something where if you if you incorporate it into your page or one of your pages or a class a course management system page, that page is being updated automatically, and that's that's really the the whole point behind this uh, presentation. RSS helps to give an up-to-date look for the your school's web presence. When I say your school's web presence, I'm really talking about the classes and the classrooms. Now, if you have websites at your school and some of those websites haven't been updated since uh, 2009, then you you, you kind of know when students go, go to that website or uh, try to get information about a class from that website, then they're, um, they're left not completely satisfied. So that's one thing that you might w want to, to think about and to share uh, back at your campus is um, keeping websites up to date, and this is a technique that you can use to do that. Students are uh, more engaged with current information that's on the website. So uh, even if you have uh, updated your web uh, this semester, if you've got information that's being uploaded to the site on a daily basis, then uh, that's even going to increase engagement with students. And uh, the next bullet current event, of course, makes the content that you're sharing relevant to students' lives. And you know, you, every instructor uh, is a subject matter expert. And uh, if you can choose an RSS feed that uh, pertains to your subject matter and your students hopefully came to your class and took your class because they um, want to learn your subject matter, then they see that you're up to date, the site is up to date, and uh, that means that they're uh, pursuing something that's going to be relevant and uh, lead somewhere. Uh, also, last thing, students learn a method for lifelong learning. So um, I use, I have websites apart from Fullerton College, and I use RSS on those websites too. And frankly, I enjoy going to uh, and look and see what is uh, the updates to my RSS feeds because there are some pretty interesting articles that, that show up. Okay, next slide. Um, there we go. What does RSS mean? It, re it means really simple syndication. It's easy to create an RSS feed and it's easy to consume an RSS feed. This presentation today, what we're talking about really is consuming RSS feeds. And uh, you see this in my first bullet here, you see this term republish. Um, one of the things that people do with RSS is to go to a site and get RSS information or information that's being uh, presented using RSS and then bring it to their own site and then republish it. And so here we are um, as subject matter experts, we would like to go get information which is pertinent to our class or pertinent to our subject and uh, republish it on our uh, website. It's free and uh, Lisa, there's plenty of information out there that's free and easy to access. So there's no reason not to use this approach. Students can view headlines, content, and follow links in an RSS feed. And we'll talk about this a couple of times, but 
um, while RSS, and I'm going to show you a, a you know, a, a raw RSS page here where it looks like a lot of code because it is, then uh, you'll see that there are um, there's uh, links, there's uh, headlines and uh, content, and when the RSS feed is rendered, maybe the content or the description is combined with the link, and uh, maybe there's a date, or maybe there's a little explanation, but not all of this uh, information loads to the page all at the same time, so it's making it hard to look at. Uh, some RSS feeds are simple lists, and so it's uh, a headline, and if you hover or click on that headline, you're going to go to a page that has the information on it, and it's easy to use. Um, RSS can also mean rich site summary. So that's something I'm telling you in case you decide you're going to go search around on the web and get your own information about RSS. Don't be surprised if you see a couple of different descriptions out there. And the reason is is because there's a couple of different uh, ways to do RSS and there are different versions of RSS. And additionally, not to make it more complicated than it needs to be, but there are also other feeds out there like Atom. And I'm going to bring this up again uh, and show you ATOM. ATOM is Atom, and that's a, a way of doing a feed also. But we're focusing on RSS, and more specifically, we're focusing on RSS version 2.0. RSS is small and fast loading, small file size and fast loading, so it can be consumed with smartphones and tablets. And I have a link also uh, in a slide coming up about Feedzilla. And uh, you can create a Feedzilla RSS um, aggregator and put it on a web page and then uh, send the link to students on the web page. Uh, and they can open it up on their phones and get your up-to-date news uh, on their phone or on their tablets. Um, instructors can share current events displaying titles, dates, and article descriptions. So um, your, your students can look through uh, the information very quickly. You, you might be surprised that RSS um, could be a way to stimulate a conversation in a discussion board, or some, some way, uh, something to get started with writing position papers or choosing a, a topic for a paper for a group. So uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can do a, use an RSS feed. I also want you to know that uh, for the links that are in this presentation, I put those links on my Twitter feed also. My Twitter feed is twitter.com forward slash Terry Gleason and see there's no space in between uh, my first and last name, so it's Terry Gleason, no space. If you go there uh, while you're viewing this presentation, you can uh, go to that Twitter feed. It's a, it's a list, and you can click on links and see links on your phone. Most important is that you'll see feeds on your phone, and you'll see how easy it is uh, to see a feed on your phone. Switching to the next slide. Now, I've given presentations uh, before and talked about uh, using a, a technique or a programming style on web pages, and a lot of times feedback is comes back immediately about we don't need to create individual web pages any longer because we have content management systems or course management systems. And um, for for me down here in Southern California, the the two most popular are Blackboard and Moodle, and I think generally across the state that's going to be. Uh, the case. Uh, E2ZNG is out there, and uh, uh, Desire to Learn D2L is out there also. But for the most part, I would say a Blackboard and Moodle are uh, the, the majority course management systems that are being used. Moodle has a feed reader built right into it, and at some point, Blackboard might have a feed reader built into it also. But I'm going to show you. Uh, later, a technique that you can use to incorporate an RSS feed uh, into your uh, Blackboard uh, course or site. Now, uh, so some I'm going to go through my bullets. Some content management systems support RSS RSS feeds directly, and um, 
that's fine. Uh, you might not want to use that RSS feed. Maybe you want to put RSS in a learning module or somewhere else, some other content area that you create uh, in Blackboard. So uh, the tools that or uh, techniques that you learn here today will help you to do that. And also the techniques that you learn here today will allow you to put uh, your material on a public facing website or on a, on a uh, site where maybe people don't go to it, you're not recommending your students go to it on their laptop, but they're going to go to it on their phone or, or their um, iPad. Uh, when I say other news feeds, I mean Atom and other versions of RSS. Later you'll see there's 9.91 .9 and 1.0 versions of RSS. Again, uh, just for reference, we're using version 2.0. The material in my presentation can be used by instructors that want to go completely open source. That's big right now because of the, our funding uh, situation. So if you're going open source, it, you're going to use uh, pages that are outside of a content management system or uh, you're using a website, which um, I, I use also, um, then you, you're good to go with this, this material in the presentation. Also, you can source materials to student phones using RSS where students might resist logging on to your Blackboard or Moodle uh, content management system. Now, why would they do that? Well, uh, uh, it's too hard to get on or I couldn't get on or uh, I, I'm brand new to the class and I don't have my account set up. There's a lot of excuses why people don't go to the course management system. If you're hybrid, people might say, I'll just ask you in class or I'll see it when I'm in class. Um, this is another way to keep students engaged and to uh, be uh, in contact with students and um, it's, it's just another approach. Instructors can import RSS into your course management system. Okay, so I talked about that and later here in this presentation I'm going to show you a very uh, simple technique that you can use to put uh, an RSS feed into an item in a content area in Blackboard Learn. Okay, next, going to the next slide. Um, a lot of times if you're familiar with websites, we think in terms of web standards and RSS is not exactly a web standard. RSS is part of XML, if, you've, if you're familiar with that markup language. Um, and XML is a standard, but RSS is kind of uh, by itself. But here are a couple of uh, references. One of them is cyber.law.harvard.edu and they have a page there for RSS or pages there for RSS is the site. And there's a lot of information there that I uh, value. Uh, and so I, I have that printed out, and uh, but I also go there uh, from time to time to just I'll remind myself of one area of RSS or another. Another link is the RSS Advisory Board and uh, they've got a specification, but just know that it's not a standard. And uh, maybe a standard didn't work or something I don't know about, but for, for as far as I'm concerned right now, we don't exactly have a standard for RSS 2.0. Um, other news feed formats, I mentioned that before, 0.91, uh, RSS 1.0. And Adam, these are the ones that are being used, uh, kind of majority techniques uh, other than RSS 2.0. Adam is a little bit more uh, like a standard, and uh, and maybe we'll uh, make a presentation on that uh, sometime in the future. Right now, RSS 2.0 is what we're going with. Okay, so I mentioned XML. Um, it's extensible markup language. RSS is a dialect of extensible markup language. I'm not going to uh, go the direct in the direction of programming here. I just want you to know this because if you go out on the internet and start looking at um, looking for RSS information or <coughs> maybe look for things other than uh, what I present here, then um, you're going to see some of this uh, some of this uh, language. And so I just want to. Uh, get you familiar with it right now. We know the code is there and we're going to use freely available to tools and uh, skip the programming. So uh, there's there's some cut and paste or you know highlight your URL or your web address line and 
copy it to the clipboard and go put it somewhere and cut and paste in other places, but we're not programming and we're not programmers and this is I'm a teacher and this presentation is for teachers or instructors if you prefer. Feedzilla, I wanted to mention that because Feedzilla is a is a real simple way of getting an RSS feed in a pre-formatted uh, container and putting it on your web page. And uh, I've used uh, Feedzilla. I like Feedzilla because I can uh, put it on a page, uh, get the address, and uh, tweet it uh, to to uh, the people who consume my content. So, and then it's real easy to look at it on your phone. Even if you have a inexpensive phone, you may not have the best, or might not have an iPhone, or uh, you're like me, you use a BlackBerry. Uh, Feedzilla can be consumed on phones, and uh, it's a great it's a great alternative if uh, if, it, if it works for you. And it works for me, and I use it even though I do RSS other ways also. Another good place to find help with RSS is Google, and uh, it's not just a good place to find help with RSS; it's a great place to find help with RSS. So there's a lot of Google stuff in my presentation, and uh, uh, the Google uh, API is the JS API is, is great. It's easy to use. It's readily available, and uh, there's a lot of places. I'll show you one place in particular where you can go get RSS code and put it on your page. And um, we're talking about some maybe if if you're if you get interrupted, it might take you 30 minutes. So next slide, we're going to look at some unformatted RSS. So you might run across this in your browser. Um, if you're you're trying to do for RSS, so I'm just going to show it to you right now. Here it is, and really want this is tag. This is all markup tag tag language tag language markup. Uh, notice in my first line here, I have an XML statement. Sometimes you're not going to see that, but it's recommended that you have it in there. And then the second line, you can see that. Uh, it's RSS, and you get that uh, markup RSS version equals quote 2.0's quote, and then close the tag. That starts my RSS, and what I want you to see with my two red arrows is that I got a channel tag, and that channel tag describes the feed, and then I have an item tag, and I skip the first item just to get the arrows, uh, get some separation between the arrows. But the item is an individual item in the feed. And so you'll see this. We're going to show what the feed looks like after the next slide. We're going to talk about these channels and items again. But notice, and I'm going to say this again, notice in an item there's a title, link, and description. So that is in an item there's a title, link, and description. And when you're, when you're rendering your RSS feed, title and link is often combined. So you see a title which is also a link, and there could also be a description or a date that goes with the individual um, references in your RSS feed. So okay, we looked at the RSS uh, enough, and we're going to the next slide. What's this all about? I notice I'm talking about my channel tag. It describes the feed. It's an element in the feed that describes the feed. And also, I have an add item tag from the, and I'm talking about the previous slide. My item tag, each item defines a story or an article. So that item, if you click on that item, it's going to link you to uh, to uh, um, a page that opens up, possibly on the internet. Some some uh, RSS feeds are not simple. You're going to see a title, and then there's going to be a link that you can click on, and then there's going to be a description. Uh, it all depends on what what you want. Do you want your students to see all this information all at one time, or do you want them to see something that seems interesting to them, and then they're going to click on that and check it out? Uh, if you put a description there, maybe they'll be clicking less because they'll be able to decide what title is interesting uh, based on the description. So anyway, it's, uh, you'll see in the coming pages that there's a few different ways to uh, do do this RSS. The links make new information available for students to consume and for use uh, in class projects. And that's important. Uh, whether it's a discussion board or they're going to write a position paper or they're trying to figure out if uh, what to write uh, for a term paper, 
then uh, RSS might be one way to help them get started and not be stuck and uh, not and have you not end up with a bunch of emails uh, in your inbox that say, I don't get it, I don't know what to do, what should I do, what should I write my paper on, where's the list of topics that I'm able to use. Uh, this, I think, um, was my help students along a little bit. Here's an example. Now, now I'm going to tell you right now that if you go to slash dot news right now, you're not going to see these same uh, articles. And I'm doing that uh, on another computer that I'm running in my office. I'm on the latest slash dot news right now, and my first article is centered. Senators to unveil the Expatriate Act, so on. It's not solar cells that emit light break efficiency records. So this is a slide. I did a grab on this information and I made a slide out of it. So this slide, you can see from my date, it was recorded 425 and uh, that was what was on my RSS feed on 425. But if you go there today, and notice that I've used the Google shortening uh, tool. So it's goo.gl and then forward slash rr. Notice that it's capital E and seven lowercase d. That's the new, the shorter address for uh, the latest slash dot news feed. If you go there, you'll see the Late that you actually see the latest uh, slash dot news, the news that is current for today. The the reason that I I made a point out of this shortened address is because shortened addresses are easier to tweet. So if you want to uh, use the RSS, sorry, if you want to uh, text um, the address to your students, uh, it it's helpful to have a shortened address. Otherwise, you you have a long uh, URL that you're dealing with. So um, look at my Twitter feed. You'll see some shortened addresses. You'll see both. You'll see full, complete uh, ad web addresses on my Twitter feed, and you'll see shortened addresses too. It all depends on what you're comfortable with. I'm going to go to the next slide. What about the feed? The previous slide was created on 425. Okay, so I'm repeating myself. And notice that there's a shortened uh, feed there, a feed address there that you can check out on your phone right now if you like. Uh, notice also, I'm saying this again that uh, for my item tag, and if I can, I'll go back one. Notice that here's a uh, um, title that's also a link, and it's one item. So now, if I looking at my item tag, my item tag has title, link, and description. Um, in it, but not you're not going to see each one of those uh, lines on every feed. Feeds look different. It's also, not every feed is a simple list. It depends on what you want. I like to tweet simple lists to students because then even with if a student has a more inexpensive phone or is has a bad connection or might be less uh, adept. At uh, using their phone, then uh, a simple list is is easiest for them to consume and uh, hopefully click on the links and go somewhere and do something with it. Next slide. Here's a different look, and uh, this is I went to this page and just got the RSS off of this page, but you can see here's a, a di completely different look and RSS, a little bit more complex. Maybe you want to have something like this. On a page where uh, your students will be consuming it with a laptop or a pad, uh, but maybe you don't want this page to be on an inexpensive phone. Simple lists are better for an ex uh, inexpensive phones, but this might be something that would jazz up your RS RSS feed a little bit and uh, make it more interesting for students. So something to consider. You can find these uh, uh, feeds. Uh, programs on the internet, and I'm going to show you a couple of places where you can find them. Next slide. Okay, so maybe this is getting to be a little bit too much technology uh, because there's a lot of uh, feeds out there that are not about technology. They're about 
uh, sociology, statistics, uh, English. There's a lot of stuff that you can look for, but I'm going to take you to a place right now called, and some, I'm sure some of the uh, people viewing this presentation are familiar with Merlot. And Merlot is a great resource for uh, using your class or uh, using it in your content management system. And uh, so I'm going to show you Merlot. The best thing about Merlot for today's presentation is that Merlot has uh, multiple RSS feeds. And so that, that gives me a way to show you how to combine RSS with uh, uh, an aggregator if you like to, to do that and also get your RSS feeds from uh, a place where there's uh, excellent um, educational content. Merlot stands for Multimedia Education educational resource for learning and online teaching. And uh, there's a lot of things you can do with Merlot. We're just going to focus on RSS feeds today, but uh, I encourage you to go back and look at Merlot because I have and uh, it's, a, it's a great resource. Um, what you get from Merlot are materials that instructors and students both can use in class. So um, if you, you can get ideas from other people that are contributing uh, to Merlot. Don't forget Merlot is worldwide, so you're going to have uh, a lot of stuff on there that uh, you might not have thought about or didn't know where to get uh, previously. So well, let's go to Merlot. Here's the, I think the next slide is the Merlot page. Yes, that's right. And uh, you can go to Merlot uh, on your pad if you're following along with your pad or even on your phone. You, this page renders to phones, although if you're using a Blackberry, the screen might be kind of tiny, but uh, anyway, in your in the lower left hand corner, you can see there's a link there for RSS feeds. And I, if I was on the page, I could just go there and click it. And there's a lot of RSS feeds, and you're going to choose your RSS feeds using a couple of different parameters. So next slide, I think I'm going to show that. And okay, so here. The first thing you're going to do is choose your subject area. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to go uh, to, to Merlot. Just give me a second here. I'll go to Merlot and uh, tell you. So I'm, I just loaded the Merlot page, and I'm going to my RSS feed now. And that's how fast you can do it. So I just opened up Merlot on a different computer, and uh, I didn't. Uh, do the drop down, but you see there uh, right there there's an arrow for the drop down, and there's quite a few uh, topics that your or disciplines is the language that Merlot uses uh, that you can choose. So some of them are faculty development, uh, there's fire safety, history, information technology. There's all kinds of stuff to look at. That's the first step that you use to choose your uh, feed, and then the second one is down here. And that is, uh, I'll click that, recently added. But uh, what I use most of the time is most viewed materials in the past 30 days. So that's the most current information. And uh, I like to think in terms of current events. And a current event is from Merlot low is what are other people looking at. So but there's a bunch, there's uh, six, uh, here, six different ways that you can look at your or more low field feed in your subject area. So the right hand side here, that's about who recently joined Merlo. That's not as interesting for a class as uh, your subject area and then different ways uh, to, to look at that feed for your subject area. Now when you've decided what feed you want to choose, you have to go look at that feed. You have to get that feed. So you're going to come down here to the bottom. It's step three, by the way. And you're going to click on that uh, icon, the orange box with the uh, white curves in it and the dot. You're going to click on that, and you're going to get the feed show up as a kind of raw feed, and it's going to have an address uh, at the top of the uh, page. So let's look at that and see if that comes up. Okay, so there you go. So anyway, I showed you that raw RSS feed before. So here it is. 
There it is, uh, the raw RSS feed. There's the channel tag. There's the item tag. It's not something brand new. And uh, thank God the, uh, all the text is too small so that we're not going to sit here and read the text. We're going to look at the big red arrow up here and know that what you need to do is copy the URL. So you're going to click in that URL or the address bar and highlight the address bar and then do copy or you can do, if you're on a uh, Windows machine, control C and get the address, save it to the clipboard, and then we're going to go figure out where to put it in our RSS feed. Okay, so anyway, this is us getting the RSS feed that we chose uh, from our Merlot.org page. Okay, so next slide. Here's what an, an RSS feed looks like. Now, this is just one way to do it, and notice that I have a, a select menu here on this page um, where I can click on that select menu and I can choose different feeds. You might not want to do that. I think in this select menu there's only three feeds that are available. And uh, you might not want to do that. You might just want to make sure that your students are going to one feed but uh, this might be something if you have an advanced class or you're, you're, you're teaching a graduate class somewhere, maybe this might be something that you want to do. You have a select menu, and right now the feed that you see is for teacher ed or teacher education. Uh, and it's the most viewed materials by subject area. Uh, and uh, there's, a, there's four entries here, and you can click on one of those entries and a, a, a page will end up. And oh, by the way, here's one in a different language. So uh, a lot of different things to do, but uh, for introductory classes or uh, your website, maybe you just want to have uh, a single feed that your students or uh, otherwise your participants, if you're a trainer, uh, use. And here's the address to that feed, by the way. So you can go there and uh, operate this page. And I can't operate the page because it's a uh, frame grab, but um, you can go operate the page. Next slide. Now here's, here's where uh, some people are going to possibly feel like it might get a little bit too complicated, but uh, other instructors are out there that are used to using a web page. And this is uh, what I'm recommending with this slide is go to Dynamic Drive dynamicdrive.com and uh, you can click on the uh, RSS uh, feeds, XML and RSS feeds on that page. And here is one of many RSS uh, readers that you can use or aggregators that you can use. And that this this code when you put it when you put it on your page will render your RSS feed. And uh, there's a couple of things that I want you to see if you're going to go to Dynamic Drive or, or uh, otherwise use Google to do your RSS. And that's this red arrow up here. It's kind of hard to see. So I wrote it right here. Notice that today it went in your source uh, for your loading your RSS feed, you no longer need uh, your API key. So if you if you're not if you're familiar with maybe Google Maps or using Google in another application, uh, a couple of year ago or a couple of years ago, uh, you needed to sign up for a, an API key. You no longer need an API key for the Google API. So you just get rid of this code. It says uh, there's a um, an extension right here. You just get rid of it. And this is what your source looks like. So um, everybody, uh, people are doing an RSS. They were set up for Google doing it before. So they all want to have that little note in there about don't forget your, uh, your, Google, a your Google API key, but uh, this is what it should look like today. So just so you don't get stuck. You put everything together and uh, if you leave that note in there, then the browser thinks that you still need an API key, so it won't work right. So if you just take that note out of there so you don't need an API key, then it will work fine. And let me see, do I have a uh, – oh, okay. And here, this is the code that you're going to put into your page. 
I'm just showing you with this red arrow that it's in this uh, CSS feed dot add feed uh, line right here. This is where you put your address from Merlot. And you can kind of see on the slide right here, this is the Merlot address. And I'm just putting it right into my Google uh, code. And uh, let me see if I have a, there it is. Okay, so this is if I want to be uh, completely open source and I want to use a web page and everything, then Google gives me the uh, free stuff to use. And here's an example page, and there's the address if you want to go look at the page on on uh, on the web. Uh, this is an example page where uh, it's a web page where you can put your class title or you can put your uh, instructor name and uh, or something else that says that tells your students they're in the right place for your class. And then uh, you can have uh, a welcome uh, message there. And then here's your RSS feed. And this RSS feed is for faculty development. And uh, it, it's the feed that is most viewed material in the past 30 days. So um, there you have it. It's a single feed. And there's no choices. And uh, it's easy to read. And you, you go to the uh, title. And uh, it really is a link. You click on it. There's no description. And I've turned off the date, so there's no date. It's, it's a simple list, and it renders very well on the phone. So I'll go to the, I got three slides here showing uh, examples of um, Merlot feeds. Here's another one, except in this feed, um, I have sociology and statistics combined. So. Um, that might be another way to do things is uh, you're in a sociology class, but you're emphasizing statistics. You're combining two feeds. Some people might say this is a mashup, although there's no map or there's no uh, YouTube video here, but uh, it's a, it combines two RSS feeds. Uh, and so it's another thing you can do. But same, same basic idea. Um, I have my class title or my instructor name. I have a welcome message, and then I have my feed, and people can consume information from that feed. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Third one. Now I've got a red arrow down here, but I just want to look at, uh, remind you that here's my class title or instructor name. So it's the same basic page. Now here's my welcome message, and what I'm telling you, these are really current events. What I'm telling you is that. I have a feed from the BBC. I have a feed from MSNBC. So two news feeds, not part of Merlot at all. And then I have a Merlot feed that I combined in there. What I want you to see is that I uh, re-enabled the uh, date um, uh, block in my uh, code for Merlot, and Merlot might give you an invalid date. Uh, now, I haven't checked the other feeds. It might be just for this feed, but earlier, and I'll go back and show you. Notice there's no date in the page for sociology and statistics. So I turned it back on for uh, my page that combines uh, BBC, MSNBC, and Merlot. And uh, you can see that the dates work on BBC and MSNBC, but they don't work on Merlot. There's probably something you can do, but to keep it simple, I just turned the dates off. Okay, so um, by here I turned them on, and um, you can see there's a, and these are more complex. I have a description, I have a link, and I have a title in here, and you can see it's, it's a little bit more of a complex view of an RSS feed. Okay. There are other feed aggregators from Merlot that you can look in. So if you get back on Merlot and look around, you'll see. And here's a feed aggregator in their list for 2.0. And I think there's one for all right there. You don't have to uh, build it yourself. You can use an aggregator that comes from Merlot and put it on your page. Okay, I'm trying to get to um, feed2js.org. This is a great opportunity for instructors. And uh, this is, uh, it's not new, but it's, a, it's something that I'm going to use and I'm going to show you an easy way to capture a uh, feed from Merlot and put it into your Blackboard Learn class 
in a say in a learning module or a content area that you created. So um, the first arrow here, first of all, okay. So if you go to feed.js and I'm going to do that right now. So I'm on feed.js and I'm going to click on build. So that's uh, I don't read anything about feed uh, to JS. You're you're welcome to go. And I, I, I'm, but I'm, I'm just saying, if you want to use feed to JS, just go to the site, click on build, and you get this page. And here's where you're going to put your address that you collected from Merlot. Remember when we were back in the Merlot page where we got the RSS feed and we clicked in our uh, address bar and we copied the address to the clipboard? You're going to click in this box and and paste that address right in that box. And before you leave this view, you're going to change the number of items that you want to display. Now, five might be enough, but maybe you want to have more. So you can put uh, nine, ten, fifteen items in there, and you change the number of items that you're going to display uh, in this box. So now, now you don't see it on this page, but I'm going to on the right hand side of the feed to JS page. Then you're going to oops, I'm going to go. You're going to see this block, and it's going to uh, you're going to see generate JavaScript. Now before I go generate JavaScript, I'm going to go back and look at this. I'm just reminding you here. Where did I get that address? So I'm going to go. Here's where I put the address. I'm reminding you, here's where I got the address. I went to the address bar and highlighted it and copied it to the clipboard. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to paste it in that text block that you saw before. And then I'm going to click on Generate JavaScript. And what I see when I generate JavaScript is it loads a page with all this programming googly gawk in here. And I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to copy it. Into my Blackboard shell. Okay, so one more time, I'm going to go back. I'm going to put my address there. I'm going to change the number of items I want to display. Then I'm going to generate uh, JavaScript. Then I'm going to grab my code. I'm going to highlight this and paste it in my clipboard. And then here I am in Blackboard in a Item. So I will have created a content area, and in my content area, I will have created an item, and then I will, in the on the XML editor for my item, notice that I have to be in XML mode. HT, pardon me, HTML mode. So I click on that button, and I get into HTML mode, and then I can paste my uh, code that I got from my J2. Uh, B2JS page, and then uh, save it. Or in Blackboard, you're going to submit it. And here is going to be my feed. And there you can see the item for my, um, my the icon for my item. And uh, this is this is a screenshot of. One feed on the page. I'll show you the whole page in a, or uh, the top of the page in a second. But you can see there's my item, and I got that item by just opening up my editor, clicking in the HTML mode, and then pasting my code that I got from the uh, feed to JS uh, page, and then submitted. For Blackboard, and then Blackboard renders my feed, and it shows up as an RSS feed on my uh, page. And I'll show you the top of the page. Here's my uh, RSS content uh, area in Blackboard. It's a content area, so it's and I uh, I have an RSS feed link in my uh, navigation menu. So I click on that. It opens up this content area, and then you can see. I can't scroll because this is a screenshot. But you can see I have a faculty development feed, and I have an e-portfolio feed, and then down below, down here, is this uh, feed. Pardon me, feed that I have on um, my previous slide. This is my history feed that uh, I made. 
uh, using feed2js.org. So there I have it. Um, that's a RSS feed in my Blackboard area. Some people may prefer this. Uh, you might find that if you're going to uh, share this with instructors, you might find that people don't want to use a website or they don't want to tweet it. They just want to have it in their class because that makes the students go to your, your class and open up the content area and, and look around in your class. That's perfectly all right. But uh, you have some options here, whether it's you're going to uh, you're going to uh, provide your content to a mobile environment or you're going to use it on your website or you're going to put it in your uh, Blackboard page or you're going to do all three. You have options and uh, it's going to help you and your students to be more engaged. Okay, so here's my conclusion. Instructors can use RSS feed on their websites or in their course management systems and I'll just throw in mobile devices for right now. There are several ways to capture and show feeds in your class, and so we've seen that. Google, uh, Feedzilla, and uh, Feed2JS are, would be starting places that I would recommend. And instructors can place a feed on a web page and tweet the address to uh, students, and you can check that out on twitter.com forward slash Terry Gleason. And uh, if you have any uh, questions or uh, you tried something and it didn't work, email me. I've got my contact information here. Email me and uh, I'll be glad to do whatever I can do to uh, help out and help you to get your RSS feed uh, up and running. Thank you very much. Again, thank you very much for uh, coming to my presentation and uh, I really enjoyed sharing this with you and um, I hope you enjoyed uh, going through it with me. Thank you very much.